Hi, everyone. I'd like to welcome Lori Preshing from Allergies in Me today. Lori became passionate about the study of nutrition and its impact on the body and mind because of the challenges she experienced at home with her sons. Lori is now a nutritional consultant offering various expertise from food allergies to digestive issues and also chemical sensitivities. So thank you so much, Lori, for joining us today. We're so glad to have you. Thank you so much for having me, Christine. Pleasure to be here. So how about we begin with maybe hearing a little bit about your story and what inspired you to have such a, a great interest in nutrition? It's so funny, the journey that life takes us. My gosh, because <laughs> looking back at those times, I was not a good cook. <laughs> that was before they were born. They have made me literally become what I am today. I owe it all to them. What we've discovered and found in our journey, phenomenal. But um, yeah, so no, we, um, back then when they were, well, even before they were born, we ate out a lot, you know, fast food and frozen food and prepared food and just kind of, you know, and miss, ate out a lot. Um, and then when they were born, you know, it took us a while. It was tough. It was really tough. We went through so many, like, colic and constant gastro and crying and like both of them right and not good sleepers and then they became toddlers around four or five like just things got worse and they compounded and like the eczema that came out and headaches and stomach pains and anxiety uh ocd stimming um bright red cheeks bright red ears uh, and then sleep. Their sleep was so, so poor. You know, it would take them a long time to fall asleep and they were light sleepers. And if they woke up at all at night, they were up for hours. So we were exhausted. We were like, what's going on? You know, looking for answers, doing all these tests, trying to find out. We kept tests are normal, tests are normal. And we're like, no, something's wrong. Like all these things, I just, I just felt meant something, right? And I just didn't know what. So long story short, my nutritionist at the time said, well, why don't you just do a food allergy test? What do you mean? Like, what? We don't have allergies in our family. What are you talking about? I'm so glad I listened to him because that, that test was a lightning bolt. It changed everything. Um, it showed what foods they were reacting to strongly. And some of the markers like went right off the page. So things like um, gluten and the dairy they were eating, uh, potato, pineapple, oh, all kinds of things. They just weren't digesting the food, tolerating it well, and it was manifesting in all these symptoms. So we are the first generation in our family to have these food sensitivities and everyone thought I was completely, what, like, what are you talking about? It's just food, right? Uh, but no, because for me, it made sense. If food can hurt them, if food could do this and hurt them, then it made sense that food could also heal them and reverse it and turn it back. So that's what we did. Uh, we started reading, we started changing the diet. We changed the diets for the whole family and all like my headaches went away. My sleep got better. My husband's sleeps got better. His crankiness went away, you know, his rashes went away. It affected us all. So to start to correlate that foods can do this to your body just became fascinating. And then I just dove right in, like just completely immersed myself. So I remember that I would put them to bed and I'd be online like past midnight going, oh my God, and you find one thing and another thing and gluten-free, dairy-free, and what's all this and what's happening to the food. So it's been quite the journey. Um, and now that's what I do. I love helping families figure stuff out because we literally lived it. It's been 15 years um, and they've taught me a lot, just removing these foods, replacing them, supplementing, um, healthier choices. Um, yeah, they're teens now and they make their own smart decisions. We've sold them documentaries and had lots of conversations about it and we're a completely different family because of them. That's an amazing story, very inspiring. Thank you so much for sharing. I thought maybe since now you work with multiple families and you work with children of all kinds, many children with special needs, maybe we could dive into the importance of nutrition for these children and in helping them thrive. Oh, for sure. Um, so what I specialize in, like, it's funny too, because that's evolved. I started out with just allergies because I'm like, I remember I went looking for help when they had allergies. And other than my nutritionist who kind of like, well, you know, read this, read this. And then I just found aller other allergy moms who helped me. Like there's a whole allergy world out there. So 
Now um, I went out with the intention, trying to become the help that I needed all those years ago. That's what, that's all I want to do is help people navigate. And these are your options. These, these is, this is what you should read and, and try. Um, so I started out with allergies. So helping people uncover their hidden food allergies, but um, I kind of went into also complex kids. So I see all different kinds um, and they can be, you know, severe as like having um, seizures and Lyme or um, physical issues, uh, even as or like picky eating, picky eating, not sleeping, something's going on, rash. And then the, the parents are finding that the answers that they get is not, are not helping. They're making it worse or it's a band-aid or what. So I find that no matter where you are, no matter where your family is or where your child is, there are always steps that you can take to improve and help your child feel better. Um, I find a lot of times, again, it's that food and mood connection, you know, that gut brain connection that we're now hearing about mainstream. It really matters what you eat. Um, if your child is not feeling well, then they're not going to act well. They're not going to behave well, like like mine too. They were tantruming all the time. They were in constant pain, big bloated bellies. Had no idea, right? They're toddlers, but all that, like all that, went away, and they became pleasant. And we had hugs, and then love you, mom. And oh my, tantrums just melted away. It was just phenomenal to see. So yeah. I find that again, no matter where you are, there's always a step that you can take. Your child's not sleeping, there's things that you can do. Your child was constipated, there are things that you can do. So no matter where your child is at, you can always take steps to make them feel better. Can you give us a few examples of, of different solutions to certain challenges, just to give us a sense of, of the kind of work and the kind of um, advice that you give families? Um, okay. To answer your question, um, one example that I see a lot is picky eating. <laughs> picky eating and not sleeping are like, you know, the top two that I see in children they present with. Um, sometimes they have a whole long list of things, but my the parents come in and my child is just not eating. And you know what? Been there both of my children because they would gang up on me right they were four or five they were like oh my god and they knew how to throw themselves on the floor and just scream they were literally limited to four foods i remember sitting there at the dinner table going you know this is just wrong i can't just keep giving them the same four foods it's not good but how do i get out of it <laughs> so it's a slow and steady journey so much to consider. Um, I actually, there's a whole other lecture that I do. There's a lot of um, elements that are going on all at the same time. You know, there's you've got the body. Maybe they're nutrient deficient. Uh, for example, when you're low in zinc, your taste buds go off, and food does not taste good anymore to them. Reading that and living through that, huge. Um, there's emotional, there's psychological, they emulate, they feed off of you. Uh, and there's the whole, like, how do you parent that? You know, do you do the reward? Do you, okay, if you eat that, I'm finding like, if you do the reward thing, like, okay, if you eat your carrots, you know, I'll give you uh, some candy afterwards. You're teaching them that carrots are unbearable. Like, oh God, I got to get through eating this so I can have the candy. It's a total slow and steady mindset shift. But I mean, other than, you know, you can start making smoothies for them, start putting the supplements in the smoothies, getting them involved in the kitchen. Um, and then again, maybe some testing in there, finding out if there's deficiencies going on that um, are linked to a lot of these behaviors that you see. Um, so yeah, you know what I can also do is share some slides with you. I have a few things broken down, um, maybe about 10 slides, and I focus on a lot of the conditions that go along with all these complex children. And it's funny because we, a lot of times we just kind of dissociate some of them. Oh, well, that's just constipation. Oh, well, they're just hyper or they're not sleeping. Guess what? It's all combined into the same thing. You know, when the body's not well, it impacts everything. That's then let's see if I can do there how does that look perfect okay and you can still see me there we go Absolutely. yes yeah so I've just I've given this a few times and I always love and I miss that interaction with the live audience because I see the light bulbs go on in the parents eyes like when I talk about something or I've just described their child you get this big aha moment and then that maybe there is something to this because there 
I'm finding I'm still swimming upstream and explaining that food is so powerful and all these nutrients and supplements really impact the body in ways that we don't fully understand yet. Um, and shifts happen. Shifts happen when you start changing the diet for the whole family, right? So I always start by saying like everything you eat can either nourish you or the body has to detox it. It's the body doesn't want it. The body can't use it. They're, they're non-foods. Basically, they're non-foods. The body has to use its own resources to detox it. So everything nourishing, so vitamins, minerals, whole foods, um, good fats, uh, the fiber that you know are in fruits and veggies, and then um, the omegas that we need for that um, brain development. So key, so key for um, young, young children. And then again, the detox category, literally sugar. We don't, the body doesn't need sugar. Uh, I do a whole other topic on sugar, <laughs> how it impacts the body. Basically, we just need to detox it when we eat it. Uh, food colorings, additives, caffeine, same thing. It's a non-food. The body, all it does is uh, help um, produce adrenaline and cortisol that the body then needs to detox from. And then any kind of preservatives. Uh, food additives, food, uh, things to make food last longer like in frozen foods. That's what we learned um, the, the hard way. My, my children weren't tolerating any of these box foods, but we didn't understand it fully. And again, when I stopped eating them myself, my headaches went away. So there's something to it, like the MSG and all that, just can't tolerate. And again, that's the thing that I was talking about. So the whole gut brain connection, your microbiome and how it impacts the brain and how it impacts your learning, how it impacts your mood. Um, we now know that the two of them talk nonstop via the vagus nerve, right? Um, so I always talk about the other holistic ways that you can strengthen the vagus nerve, things that we just don't understand, but it will help you know that whole connection of them communicating and just help you improve feeling better, I guess. So any kind of music and singing and humming, uh, even laughter. Like, it's so funny because I've just been one of those glass half full uh, people and always trying to find ways to, to laugh, especially in these times, it's really hard. Um, but yeah, laughter is so important uh, of what it does, stimulation in the body. Intermittent fasting, that's like giving your body a break. Instead of grazing all day, you know, your last meal at night to your first meal in the morning, making sure the body can do other things like detox, repair, grow, cell regeneration, that kind of thing. Cold showers, I'm, I'm sure everybody knows about this, but they don't know what its impact is on the body. Like when you finish your shower, finish it on cold, it really stimulates uh, and invigorates um, on the vagus nerve and then your skin, it closes all your pores, right? And then of course, probiotics, probiotics. You wanna add those good, gu good guys back into your diet, um, especially if you've taken any kind of antibiotics uh, throughout your lifetime, you wanna make sure that microbiome balance is, is there. Um, so yes, I'm a big, like for me, that was a game changer. So after doing that test and then um, with my nutritionist, one of the first things that we introduced was probiotics. And I saw a difference right away, right away. I'll never forget it. His, other than removing some of the foods that made him completely hyper, but he just calmed right down and some of his stimming went away. Some of his really odd behaviors and noises started going away with the introduction very slowly, very gradually of probiotics. And that's what it was really when we found it in test, his dysbiosis was so bad. He had parasites, he had clostridia, he had all these really aggressive, bad bacteria. I always say like, it's a picture a field of dandelions. That's what's happening in the gut. When you take antibiotics, you wipe out the good and the bad. And guess what? The bad guys are more aggressive, so they grow back faster, like dandelions. So that's what you do. Every round that you take, that's, what you, that's what's happening. So you start to have a, what we call a dysbiosis or an imbalance of the microflora. So restoring your microbiome, that's your second brain. Again, the antibiotics, um, it helps digest and absorb. Again, it can help picky eating. Maybe they're not digesting the food properly in their stomach and they're having, and it's making them feel bloated and then they stop eating before they're full. Um, they also strengthen that vagus nerve connection. And um, fermented foods, I find that our diets are just so full of sugar these days. Like we've evolved to not eating fermented foods and that's where the good bacteria is that we need to help break down and digest. Also the sour taste stimulates your stomach acid, which is, 
things that a lot of people don't know, but again, it's an acquired taste, right? You evolved to it. Um, I remember a long time ago what I would do was um, take sauerkraut and blend it. So it was very, very small. And then I would mix it in this applesauce. And I just, well, that's how I would get it, just like slowly, slowly um, gave them more and more, just to try and get some kind of fermented food in uh, along with the supplementation. So I always focus on brain foods because again, like from one year old to maybe seven year old is so, so key. They're forming their whole, you know, nervous system. They're forming the whole brain connection. The synapses are happening. So it's so important that they, they eat foods that stimulate the brain development. Avocado, I think, should be a superfood. Uh, you got everything all rolled into one. You got your your good fats, you got your nutrients, you got your fiber. It's amazing. So giving them avocados, you can put that in smoothies, you can put that in stir fries. My, I used to make my own ice cream and avocados went in. <laughs> um, fish, I, I think the smash sounds for sardines, mackerel, anchovies, um, salmon, and herring. So this fish, definitely like the most important and the smaller, the better. They're talking about the mercury content, mm, good and bad, depending on the source and where you get it. Um, but yeah, eggs, eggs are really high in choline. I remember um, giving my eggs, giving my boys eggs, uh, like for example, around test time, because it really, really helps boost that connection of what's going on for memory. Blueberries are wicked. Uh, those are top of the, the, the list for brain foods full of antioxidants that just help the brain um, boost, form those connections and then detox at night. Um, pumpkin seeds. Pumpkin seeds are also amazing. They've got like the zinc, the magnesium and the iron all rolled into one. Okay, so then I get into the actual like conditions and I just have a few slides of what, what could be going on and then what you need to consider for supplementation or foods to introduce. So um, if your child is low in intention and focus, if they're just, you know, the two seconds, two minutes, they can't really stay focused and engaged in anything, they probably have a need for that omega. So that's that brain development. Um, you wanna look at fish and avocados and maybe nut butters or nuts and seeds. Um, Supplementing with cod liver oil or even a fish oil or even adding more oil um, to cooking because at one point we were there like I would serve a stir fry and then I would do like a teaspoon of olive oil just drizzled all over it as extra. Think of they might have low vitamin D. Um, low vitamin D causes irritability, sleep um, issues and inattention. So this is time outside in the sun and like I tell my families like because we've got six months of winter, that's one of the top of the list things to supplement with uh, in winter. You're not having the sun, then make sure you take some vitamin D. And I've been doing that for years for my, my, my whole family actually, we just take it all. Uh, low zinc and low iron, and these are the foods that you can look at um, adding more in for your child. That's an, uh, another thing that ties in um, with attention and focus is that you're, you're deficient in those two things. A lot of times I see the kids, they're just eating processed foods and dairy and wheat and they, they develop an inversion to any kind of meat, any kind of protein. I see that a lot and the parents are just like, well, they won't eat meat. So I, it's fascinating to see that this aversion comes from to the thing, the very thing that they need, right? Um, and then it's slowly step by step, how do you get them eating it? So poor sleep. And that's one of the things I would say about 90% of the children is, is compounded. There's something else going on. Their body is not able to um, make enough melatonin, that hormone, that sleep hormone that we meet, that we need. Um, and also low magnesium. It's another thing, like when you see tight muscles and constipation and anxiety and sleep, magnesium. Magnesium is the mineral that calms the body down. So again, ways that you can get it in, avocado, banana seeds, so yeah, they, melatonin and serotonin, those are hormones that our body generates from eating proteins and meats, right? We break it down and we convert it into amino acids like um, GABA and 5-HTP. They're developed from protein. They're developed from the, the meats that we eat. So again, if your child is not eating any meat whatsoever, they're not getting any amino acids to convert to hormones for like serotonin to feel happy, melatonin to sleep. So you see how it all compounds, right? They're, they're not eating the very thing that they need. Um, and then also consider food intolerance. Um, actually, in my youngest, it was gluten. Gluten for him caused complete insomnia. Like he would be waking up at midnight and that's it for the rest of the night. 
And I just like, that's wrong. And a child at seven, like that just shouldn't be. Um, so constipation. Again, see this a lot, anxiety. They're just like anxious and they're hyper and they're not sleeping and they're not pooping. Um, so important to be going every day, once a day. Um, I think our, our new definition of common or normal is like every other day I've, I've seen some children, they go once a week and I'm like, like that's three meals a day all those snacks like where is that going that's all still inside you should be going at least once a day to move to move out toxins um yeah so I always look at are these children drinking what's their fluid intake like um looking at filtered water introducing them to teas juices fresh juices or even you know like um store-bought is fine i know a lot of parents who like will water it down they're so um, sugar content, eh, they'll water it down. Um, and I introduce my boys to tea very, very young because again, that also can help sleep at night. Like introduce them a nice chamomile tea and you do like a, you brew and then you do like half hot and half cold and then it's a nice lukewarm. Um, low magnesium, there's magnesium again. Uh, low vitamin C, they need more citrus and greens in their diet. Uh, definitely need, um, for fiber just to get things moving along so again that's that whole foods um, fruits and vegetables and probiotics probiotic can help out immensely here um, to just help that microbiome imbalance and then to help um, move things along so ah yeah anxiety went through this and again like anxiety in a seven-year-old i remember that like the time that he woke up at midnight, he was extra anxious because he had to test the next day, like in grade school. Um, and he was thinking about that. And he, and again, compounded with all the uh, the gluten that he was eating, that was his issue. But I just remember being like, God, he's seven. Where's this anxiety coming from? He doesn't, he shouldn't be, so he should be carefree. And no, 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 he had really high anxiety. Um, so again, magnesium, magnesium is one of those things that is just so key and so important and it does so many things within the body. Um, and if we're deficient in it, it causes like a, a cascade, a cascade effect. Uh, need for taurine, it's taurine is an amino acid which also comes from meat. Same thing for 5-HTP and GABA, there are also amino acids that come from eating proteins and meat. So I'll say this, if your child is not eating meat at all, then you really need to look at other forms of protein, beans, nuts and seeds, eggs, avocado. You need to make sure they're getting some kind of protein or like figure out how to, well that's what I help families do, step by step step introduce and, and um, get your child eating meat it could be a texture it could be a taste aversion um, and it's just stepping through getting them over that also check for food intolerances what's happening um, was a histamine reaction so that's what we learned about and lived through with my guys so um, histamine reaction is that um, you know you can either have that to environmental but you can also have that to food and it can be happening in your small intestine right you'll have a big explosion and that's what caused the bloating bloating and the gas and the mucus creation is a histamine reaction. So checking for food intolerance is so key and can become a life changer. Hyperactivity and magnesium. They have a need for um, EFAs, EFAs, essential fatty acids. So basically good fats, those omegas, those oils that we were talking about. Um, they have low vitamin B. They could be sensitive to um, food coloring and additives, uh, phenols and gluten. So uh, gluten, everyone's starting to know about that, the gluten-free, dairy-free diet. Phenols is another subcategory food family that we're finding children with issues can't tolerate. I had one mom figure this out and good on her. Uh, she went gluten-free, dairy-free, as some behaviors and issues disappeared, but then others started popping up. And she's like, oh, this is interesting. And then we started looking at all these diets and what foods you feel he's reacting to. And sure enough, it was. It was phenol, um, so grapes and tomatoes, and it's a whole subsection category. So when she cut those out, everything else went away. She was just like, so fine tuning the diet is important too, what you can do. It's almost like working backwards in layers, right? What is my child not tolerating? What are they not digesting? Okay, uh, eczema, I also see a lot and we live through this with both my boys. In my oldest, his legs were so bad, they were like alligator skin. Um, and for him, that was um, dairy. So when I finally cut dairy out, 
fully. Uh, and again, he was addicted to yogurt and cheese and loved all this stuff, but it just made him hyper and the eczema and his and bloating and ugh. So you, you find out what things um, are connected to what you correlate, right? By the time you remove them. So eczema is just basically the body just saying, okay, something's wrong. And it's like, think of it as uh, you're detoxing through the skin. Literally, the, the body is trying to push stuff out through the skin because maybe because they're, again, they're constipated and they can't go that way. So the body is resorting to this way. So they usually have a need for, again, good fats, to get things moving with um, the constipation. They either can have low zinc, and these are some foods you can uh, supplement with or, or introduce more of, low vitamin A, low vitamin D, um, and again, a need for probiotics. It could be a, a microbiome imbalance and something is going on there. And last slide, I had to put this one in because I see that a lot, is the picky eating. So again, um, probiotics really, really help break down uh, and absorb the, the foods. Digestive enzymes, so that's another thing um, for parents to start considering. Those aren't too well known. Um, I had my boys on them very young because again, we did stool samples uh, to find out my oldest was literally not even digesting meat. It was coming out the same way it went in and he wasn't breaking it down at all. So we needed to do digestive enzyme because the stomach acid was so low. They just basically help break down the food better because when it's broken down better, you can assimilate those nutrients in the body. I remember his bloated belly and his little skinny legs. And if you're not absorbing any of these foods, then you're literally becoming like deficient, right? You're, you're, um, you're almost like nutrient starved. Uh, and like I was saying earlier, uh, the low zinc, it really affects your taste and, uh, and smell. And I remember I read it as we were living through it. Uh, and the day that he started, you know, eating broccoli and um, avocado again, it was phenomenal. But we were literally supplementing zinc as a single source. Um, and it compounds and you bring, have to bring it back up, but their taste buds uh, expanded again. Also, same thing, check for food intolerance. Um, I have a lot of families saying to me, you know, like, I know they're really hungry and so I, I serve them this and they want it and they'll eat a couple of bites and then they'll stop eating. And I know, and they don't want to eat anymore. So what's happening is that, you know, maybe there's bloating going on in the stomach or the stomach is not able to break it down or, or digest it properly. So they're having that full bloated feeling already. It's exactly happened with my son when we fed him beef. He could not break that down. So I knew he was hungry, he was cranky, you know, hangry. Give him a hamburger, he would eat not even half and then stop and then not, and then still whine and cry. Um, but he couldn't, he couldn't finish it because he wasn't breaking it down. So he would feel really bloated and probably nauseous too, but he just couldn't tell us. He was like four, you know, so he would just cry and tantrum. But like, that's what we clued in is like, okay, if we don't feed him beef, and so we switched, we had to go to chicken and you know some of the leaner meats first, and then digestive enzymes, and then there was a lot of things that we did on layers just to help him digest better. Um, so yeah, food intolerances, it could be a big one, and then uh, also testing for heavy metals. So that was my son, you can do a hair test and see what's going on, and that pretty much talks about their body is uh, unable to detox the things that they're exposed to in the environment. And for my son, everything just stayed in his body. So he was high lead, high uh, mercury, high aluminum. And you're like, where are all these things coming from? They are his lifetime exposure to them. He was never able to excrete them and detox them. They just stayed in there and caused damage. So that's kind of it, just to share a few things and some of the common conditions that I see with the, the families that I, I work with and I broke it down into just things that you can consider based on um, what the issue is. Well, Lori, um, wow, thank you. <laughs> that was phenomenal. I mean, I just, I, I enjoyed learning from you today and I know that absolutely this information is gonna be so helpful for so many parents so I am so grateful for you taking the time and for you preparing this, these slides for us today. Um, thank you. Thank you so much. I will absolutely add your contact info under this video to make sure that people can reach out to you should they have questions. Um, perhaps they'll want to book a session with you. Um, anyway, thank you.
so grateful. I should say thank you. Thank you for the opportunity. I'm so glad that we met, but thank you. Thank you so much. Absolutely. Thank you.